Hello, my name is Charles Wood and I'm a final year medical student and I'm just here to demonstrate how to perform venipuncture. So, first of all, it's important uh, to introduce yourself to the patient and make sure you're wearing your ID badge with your name on. So you'd say, hello, my name is Charles Wood, I'm a final year medical student and I've just come today to take some blood from you if that's alright. Would I just be able to check your full name please? Uh, and the patient can reply with their full name and you can also check this against their name band so we can see here we've got Claudia Roberts also just check the date of birth and make sure there aren't any allergies to any medications at all um, then once you've done that you can explain the procedure to the patient so just let them know that it will involve having a tight band placed around the arm and they'll feel a sharp scratch as a needle is put into one of their veins um, you'll then take some blood, remove the needle and put a dressing on and then it might be quite uncomfortable but it shouldn't be painful at all and if it is they should let you know and you can stop whatever it is that you're doing and then once you've done that just ask if it's alright for you to speak aloud to your colleague as you go if you're being supervised uh, and then tell them that you're going to gather some equipment so the equipment you'll want, uh, you need a tray hopefully as sterile as possible um, you'll also need a tourniquet to apply you'll need a pair of gloves to put on and some alcohol wipes uh, to clean the area that you're going to be taking blood from. You'll then want a vacutainer needle, a vacutainer holder, and your three vacutainers in this case. We're going to be taking three. Uh, and the order that you take these in is very important. Blue comes first, and blue should always be as full as you can have it, otherwise it's often uh, rejected by the labs. Uh, and the others about three quarters full we usually do. But the order is blue, then yellow or gold, and then finally purple. So once you've gathered up all your equipment, which also includes uh, some gauze to make sure you can clean the patient's uh, vessel afterwards, you should cleanse your hands again. And you should put on some gloves. So once your gloves are firmly in place and you've gathered your equipment together, you can then approach the patient. Just make sure that they're still alright for you to go ahead with the procedure and they understand uh, what's about to happen, as you explained before. Then take your tourniquet, uh, ask the patient whether they have an arm which they would prefer you to use, uh, and get them to expose it uh, to above the elbow so that you can see the whole of the arm. Then you attach your tourniquet high up so that you can see all the vessels below. And to tie it, this simple band tourniquet, you just loop it around on itself, let them know it's going to be a little uncomfortable but shouldn't be painful, and have it like that. At this stage, you should wait uh, for just a short amount of time to see the veins becoming engorged and rise to the surface. And then once you've seen one that you think uh, will be okay for you to take blood from, you can take your alcohol wipes and Simply a single wipe will do of the area, making sure you're not going over the same ground twice. Then you can dispose of that alcohol wipe and wait for approximately 30 seconds for it to evaporate, by which time the area should be clean. During this time, you can assemble your uh, blood taking equipment. So your vacutane needle has a green end which covers the needle itself and a grey end which is the other side, which is what we're interested in at the moment. So remove the grey and you can see there's a small plastic uh, part here and the vacutainer holder screws in place make sure it's firmly in place there and that's where you're going to attach your vacutainers so now that 30 seconds has passed you can look back at the patient's arm and visualize the vessel that you've cleaned you pull back on the sheath for the needle carefully remove the green cover and you should be able to see that there's a beveled edge to the needle uh, and this should be facing upwards and you want to insert the needle gently at an angle of approximately 45 degrees so you just say to the patient I'm going to take some blood now you'll feel a sharp scratch and taking the needle at 45 degrees beveled edge up on the area that you've cleaned you just insert the needle then once that's in place just stabilize the vacutainer holder take your blue vacutainer first and attach that by pushing it on and as you can see it fills with blood and it's very important as I mentioned before that the blue be filled completely to the top so now that it is you remove that take your yellow or gold and attach that and again fill it with blood and then finally the purple 
And while you're doing this, it's important to occasionally just look up at the patient and make sure they're comfortable and not showing any signs of distress. So now that you've, you've taken the blood that you need, you can remove the tourniquet, take your gauze to cover the area, and then applying pressure with the gauze, gently remove the needle. At this point, you can put the needle cap into place just by clicking it like that, which makes it safe and easy to dispose of, and then place that into the sharp spin. So just apply some pressure to the gauze now. You can even get the patient, uh, if they're feeling okay, to hold it down for you while you get some tape to secure it into place. Make sure they're feeling comfortable and don't have any questions for you about the procedure. And then just gather up your equipment, uh, making sure that your vacutainers are properly labelled with the patient's information and your uh, name and the time. And again, you can check this against the patient's band and these can be properly filed. So once you've disposed of your equipment, uh, and you've labelled your vacutainers and sent them to the appropriate place, it's important after every patient contact to obviously remove your gloves, dispose of them correctly, and then do one last cleanse of the hands before you move to a new clinical area.